Hello and welcome to the shader chain tutorial video. If you're on Mac, the first thing you'll want to do is check out your config.json and make sure the path to ffmpeg is correct. Otherwise, GIF and MP4 rendering won't work. Um, also, only if you're on Mac, you open the app by going show package contents, contents, Mac OS, and then launching it from this binary file. It opens to a default preset. Um, each preset ha is composed of uh, individual shader passes, each pass giving uh, its output texture to the next uh, pass as an input texture. Um, so if we drag all of these away, you can see the progression of how it was composed. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new preset and we can build one from scratch. And the way you add shaders to your project is just um, go to your data folder and go to the shaders folder and just drag in shaders and they will be um, added as passes and I'm going to add another feed a feedback shader and a vignette shader and you can rearrange these passes by clicking and dragging them and reordering them like that and the uniforms in here should update as well um, so I'm just going to make this look nicer and uh, yeah, you can change like the phase and stuff. You can also modify them with MIDI, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, but right now, um, we're going to edit it in full screen. And basically, yeah, you change the resolution like that and press F to go full screen and then G to hide the GUI. Um, you can overlay like a text editor with the transparent background if you want to like live code the shader. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave the interface as it is with a resolution of 500 by 500. Um, but yeah, I'm going to make an edit to the shader, make um, an error happen, and then the error shows up in shader chain right here, and it will uh, stop rendering until you fix it. But you save the file, and then it updates like that. Um, yeah, so to make a render, you just... Uh, Go into this menu, you set the duration of the render uh, and the FPS. You can click preview to confirm that it's actually looping. Um, if you if you are making loops, that is. And then you can go to save frames. And then this will save um, this as PNGs in your renders directory. Right here, uh, prefixed with uh, the name of the pre working preset. And then once you click GIF, uh, you can change the number of colors because GIFs, um, yeah, they are a lot smaller in file size wise if you reduce the amount of colors. And you can also change the scale too to something less than one. But yeah, you can just click encode GIF and then it'll block the main thread, which is awesome. But it will move all of the images into its, um, its own folder. And yeah, it will produce the output here. You can view it. And yeah, you can do the same thing with MP4. You can change the number of loops if you want to like um, have a longer video for a shorter loop, for example. It's like you don't want a three second video, but you want this looped three times to be a nine second video sort of thing. Uh, it will save two copies. One of them just uh, named uh, the preset, the other one with a suffix of looped <clears throat> and you see it's like nine seconds long as opposed to three and let's see what's next um yeah we'll try the audio preset now so we we'll go back into presets drag in the audio and so this one's audio reactive but it won't react to audio if you don't give it audio to react to so what you can do is uh, drag in an mp3 or a wave file and it will start playing automatically so this gives you an fft texture and but it also gives you an audio accumulator which accumulates based on the frequencies of what's playing right now um, anyway it's all synced up when you render so if you want to render like an audio reactive thing um, the fft should like be sampled at the correct time of the png render which is cool um, if you're tired of listening to the current track, you can just go to remove track and then it will stop um, reacting to the audio. 
Um, let's see. Oh yeah, MIDI mapping. So if you go to File, MIDI Mapper, uh, it will show you a list of all the uniforms that are currently in the working preset. And if you click one, it will say Mapping Cell Offset. And then you can just um, use the MIDI mob which you want, MIDI knob which you want assigned to that uh, parameter. And then it will be assigned. And if you save the preset, that data will also be saved to the preset. Um, just going to hit Close and modify this with my MIDI LPD8. And yeah, so it works like that. Um, let's see. And as for texture input, it supports a bunch of different types of things. So I'm just going to go to the video test preset, drag that in. And this is actually sourcing it, uh, its texture data from a video file. Um, and if you want to change this, you can just click on the, the texture uniform, and then it will. Uh, you can open from file, you can use the webcam, you can use the audio, which for uh, also you can select use microphone, and it should use the microphone input. Um, you can select different passes that currently exist in the preset. If you select the the sort of like parenting pass, it will give you a feedback texture, which you can, which I'm using in this uh, other pass here, to create this like ghosting effect. Um, so yeah, you can also drag in textures onto the texture uniforms. So for example, I can let's just like drag this noise texture in, and then that'll update like this. It's like not very interesting, but um, just wanted to demonstrate the functionality. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. If you have any questions, you can email me. Uh, there's a lot kind of going on here, very like esoteric workflows, but it works for me. So yeah, give me a show. Let me know what you want in the app and yeah, what you'd like to see. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching and your interest and hope you have a good time with the software.